Okay, so I said I'd do it, and I'm gonna do it. So this is gonna be an explanation of the dot flow speed run and a tutorial of it. Um, basically a lot of the visual cues in it and stuff like that. But yeah, let's get started. So timing on the run starts um, from as soon as you enter the static to when you leave the door with all 24 effects. So first off, all we're gonna do is just go into the chair to start the run. And then if you saw my chair storage video, the first one, we're gonna wanna do that. So just sit down in the chair and wake up. You do this by, you press space or whatever button you're using to enter the chair. And then like right after you press it, doesn't have to be too fast, but it has to be pretty fast. Hold down shift and then you'll sit down in the chair. But now, if we go back into the dream world, we will see that the chair is gone. And when we go here, we'll be able to move faster. So from here, we're going to head to the um, pipes and foam world or whatever it's called. And the visual cues here are just, you're going to go straight down until you hit this pole. And then you're going to go left. And then you're going to go down as soon as you hit this pole. So the beginning is pretty simple. And then you're just going to get the iron pipe. And then go back. And enter the apartment. So that part's really, really simple. So from here, we're going to want to go to uh, the Famicom world. And I'm going to talk about movement a little in tight spaces and how you should hold your fingers and stuff like that. So um, if any of you play the piano, you might know that when you play, you want to curve your fingers. That's kind of how you're going to want to hold them in these tight spaces. Because as you can see, you're going to have to do a lot of movement. And it definitely takes practice, and it's one of the most frustrating part about running an EU Mandiki game. But, that being said, well, let's head to the Famicom world. And the first thing we're going to get in the Famicom world is the broom. Because obviously the broom will let us do the speed glitch to make us move faster. And we won't be using, unlike in the Yume Nikki speedrun, we won't be using any of the arms at all. Or any of the thing that makes us go back to the Nexus at all, because it's too out of the way. And it's one of the later effects we get. So, from here we're just going to head over and um, follow my path if you don't know where to go. But I'm guessing if you want to speedrun this game, you probably already know where to go. But I was always saying, the, what makes this different from like a regular Yumaniki speedrun is, if you've ever seen a regular Yumaniki speedrun, it's really, really fast movement. So, we're just going to head into here, and the pattern is really easy to remember. You're just going to go down, 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 right, up, and that's the pattern. So. Then you're going to get the television and wake up, and I suggest making your splits um, to have same as m mine, so split right there. So basically, after you do that, you're just going to want to go back into the dream world and do the same thing where you sit down in the chair, but this time instead of waking up, you're going to equip the broom. And then you're going to go straight up into the red-eye world and straight up from there until you see this. And usually the good best place to go is right here. And you just go over until you reach the eye. Now if you might have saw it in my own run, PB run, um, I went down from here. It's actually faster to go up. There's not really a visual cue for it though, so 
Um, the best thing I can tell you is, as soon as you see the pipes, head up. So then, from there, we're just gonna head to the paw print path. Yeah, that's what it's called. And to the rainbow maze. And as far as I can tell, this run is as optimized as it's gonna be, or there's just small optimizations left. There could still be a few big optimizations, I'm not sure. But from there, we're just gonna go down and head into the first door right there. And from here, the pattern is really simple. I thought it was really confusing at first just because it looks like a really confusing location. Just gonna go straight this way, down, and then down, and then this door right here, and then you're there. And then you're just gonna follow the path until you get the cat effect. And then just head back. And then from here, we're gonna go um, straight right till, and then up till we reach this door. And then just head through there. And then we're gonna go right here and um, go into here. And now this pattern right here, um, it does seem confusing at first, but it's really, really simple. Basically, you're just gonna wanna head down most of the time. See so a head down. Except this one, you have to head left. But that's pretty simple because it's still like the downmost one, kind of. And then from there, head down. And then that's really all the path is. It looks a lot more complicated than it is. So from there, we're just gonna head back and go into the sewers. So there's really not much to say here. You just kind of go straight. We're going to the flesh walls. To get to the flesh walls, you go through this pass. A little optimization I found right here if you're still a little iffy about movement is just go straight into that wall and then you'll be on the right path for the flesh walls. There's a lot of little optimizations like that you can find. And then from there, we're just going to head straight into here and get the whisk. And then the path down. We, we go down, then left, and then up. Sorry, my computer glitches at the flesh walls for some reason. I don't know why. So then, after we go up, we're just going to head left into this opening or door or whatever and then down, and then right. And then that part isn't too hard, but you do want to be careful, because if one touches you, you, it'll unequip the broom, and then that pretty much ruins your run. up. So another thing you're going to want to really be careful of is the shift button, which is right above the arrow keys. If you press the shift button, you'll lose your uh, speed boost, and go back to the regular broom speed which obviously is not good but it's it's um not too hard to afford i avoid i've done it in a few runs but they were mainly my earlier ones so from here we're just gonna head um back out which at first i thought it didn't seem optimized but this actually is optimized as it can be the flesh walls are pretty out of the way, and all the other ways of getting to them are too timely. And then from here, you're just going to head here, and we're going to go to the school, but there's a few effects we have to get on the way. Um, I think just one. So at the, at the docks, we have to get slime. So to do that, just head up, right, and then down. And then obviously left. So 
So then from after that we're just gonna head to the school. And there's two effects we need to get at the school, and you can get them in any order you want. Um, I usually go basement first, then roof. But if you miss the entrance you're trying to go into, don't worry about it. Just go the other way, because I think they're about exactly the same time. So, movement in here, um, I'll go into it a little bit. It's a little confusing. Um, it's definitely hard. Probably, probably one of the hardest places for movement in the game just to be optimized. So basically, for moving here, you just want to go down, um, over, down one, up, n not up, left, up, over two, down two, left, down, and then left. And that sounds simple in theory, but you have to do it really fast, so. Um, it's definitely probably one of the hardest places for movement in the game. If not the hardest. But it's such a small amount of movement, it's really not a big deal. So then, we head to the roof. And then again, if you're using the same splits I am, after here you would wake up. And, um, when I split, uh, I, I wake up, usually I try to wake up as soon as he, she pinches her cheek. But, after that we're just gonna enter again. And this is, um, I think one of the shortest streams, if not the shortest. Um, I think we only get two effects. But again, you're still going to want to equip, equip the room. And this time we're going to head right. And to get the headphone effect, a good visual cue is when you see this blue, head up. And that'll line you up right with the headphones effect. And then this part right here, it's kind of just like... I'll try to explain it the best I can. It's kind of just like knowing the amount of distance. Um, you shouldn't miss it though, because it's not like that big of a difference. I mean, it's not like that small of a distance. But then in here, uh, movement in here seems hard, but it's not. And then from here, we're gonna head to the water, um, ocean world. And you want to be really careful not to head where there's the most blood. A good way you can tell that is... Um... Here, I'll... So if you see right now, um, neither of the sides have blood showing. So that means the top one has blood, so you, you can head to one of the sides. And then if you see this, this amount of blood is fine, I don't, some people won't take the risk, um, they sometimes do. Because they, they look about even at this point. See, because, um, for the second one, the blood does look pretty even. So, um, if I were you, I would just not risk it. And then there are some pretty good visual cues for this. You're going to head straight over and see these pools, you're going to line up with them. And then as soon as you see um, the four poles in the corner of the screen, you're wanna, going to want to land in the opening and head up. And then for here, you got to pay attention. Um, you're going to want to turn at that little um, island or place to the right of the screen. It's easy to miss. And then you get the arm, and that's the entire dream. So after that, you would, um, wake up and split if you're using the same splits I am. I would not recommend splitting for every effect. I'll just say that right now. Um, it'll probably just slow you down. And then this is Dream 4. This is, um, 
by far the hardest stream, the most risky. Um, it's also one of the most interesting routing wise though. So from here we're gonna head straight to the pipes and phone poles world or whatever it's called. Go straight left or I don't know why I went that way. Yeah, don't go that way. That's not the way you should go. So head straight down and then over and then you can usually turn usually try to turn at the end of those poles right there and just head into the apartments and then from here we're gonna go to the elevator and from the elevator we're gonna go to the decaying art gallery and then to the prison So the fastest route for the prison is just pretty much left and straight down, and then as soon as you hit this point, go up and then left. And then we're just going to go right to the guillotine here. And from the guillotine, we're going to go straight to Fisherman. And then into the, um, well, I think it's called Stars World or something. I'm not sure. But this is the hardest visual cue. And if you want to move over a bit to be able to see it better, you can. Um, but those dots right there, you want to move to the left see them for when you're aligned with them and then do the same thing with the opposite direction and then an interesting thing you can enter this door at any angle so it's always best to enter it from the back um, but that's a little hard to do and then from here this is um the biggest RNG part of the run and this is what can kill your run so from here we're gonna head straight up through those um, that changes the scenery, and it's not, it's not too hard to find where they are. Um, from here we're gonna head straight right, and now there's, I think, like, four places, uh, Oriko can be. Um, the best one is she'll be standing right outside the, um, building, but that one is really rare. Um, this one is where she'll be sleeping, which is one of the worst. Um, because for some reason... Um, you can't get the effect when she's sleeping. So to fix that, just exit and re-enter. Um, now I am gonna exit just to sh try to demonstrate all the different Oriko locations. Because I there is one where she's not in there at all, and I think it's randomized where she is, but I don't know. So I don't I don't have time to show all the Oriko locations, but basically if she's not in there, go straight up from here. And usually at like this pole, turn left, or she'll be right here or somewhere around here. But it's not always a guarantee, so um yeah, that's probably the worst part of the run because it's completely luck based. And then from there after we do that, we're just going to head back out, and where this pole is, go up, and then that should bring us right here, which is the exit back to the um, main place, the main way you get here, and from here, we're just going to go to the um, garden world, ghost flower world, and we're going to head right a little until like the last flowers in view but you'll be able to see it so it shouldn't be too big of a deal and then get the watering can effect and then from here head straight up until you hit that and head back into the door and then from here we're going back into the pipes and foam pulls world
and um don't forget I've forgotten this a few times you have to stop in here and get the dress effect which it's a really embarrassing thing to forget forget because you can't complete the game without it and it's not it's so simple to get but from there we're just gonna head up to the roof And now you really need to be careful in this part because the kaibutsus are sort of randomized. Yeah, there's some skill involved in getting past them, um, but you'll get better at it as time goes on. And as you can see, this right here is really, really bad luck. So I kind of just wear it out and move past it, which you can't always do. Sometimes you'll get really unlucky and sometimes it w just won't be your fault. But from there, we're just going to head straight right and head into this elevator. From here, we're going to go to the door above. And then this is another kind of risky location, but not really. If you do it well, um, there's no chance you will get cat caught by a kaibutsu. Well, I don't want to say no chance, because there's always some chance, but it's very, very, very unlikely. And then from there, we just exit out and go into here. And I probably should have mentioned earlier, for a run of this game, um, it has to be played on 1.92, not 0 0.1.92, um, because there's a lot of new content and some of the effects are changed around. So um, when I came up with the rules for the category, I wanted the um, run to be universal, obviously. Because I didn't, because technically you could just go back and use like the beta versions or something. So, um, it has to be 0 0.192. But yeah, from there we're just gonna head straight into the hospital and head into the store right here. Get the black hood effect. And then just kind of follow this path until you get to up here and then go to the door on the farthest right and enter the garden and this place is probably my least favorite place in the run that's kind of why I put it last when I was routing it or that's not the reason I put it last but um you can, at first you'll get confused where to go, so the um, best way to remember it is for here you're not going to go um, to the right to any different right paths. You're just going to try to go as downmost as possible. And then you'll reach this right here, and then obviously activate that plant right there. Exit out. and then get the plant effect. So from here, um, I used to get confused a lot. I used to go right, um, because I got mixed up, but the path is very, very simple. All you're going to do is head left. And you guys will probably remember that. I didn't when I first started. But... So pretty much you're just going to want to go here. I don't know how to describe the distance. Mainly you're just going to have to get a feel for it. And just head into here. But the distance shouldn't be too hard to get used to because it's not an insanely different amount. And I don't know why my computer just did that. But So from here you're going to get the gas mask effect and then head back to where you were to get the last effect in the game which is the ghost effect and then for my splits I do have them set weird I do have like the dream 4 split and the dot flow split are separate so there's two splits that are like in seconds of each other 
but the best route for this is just head straight right. And then obviously head into this door. And then the best way to get this is this right here. Go left by it and then get the ghost effect. And then obviously wake up, um, split if you're using my splits. And then just go straight to the door. And you would stop timing as soon as you entered the door. But yeah, that was um, an explanation, a tutorial of a dot flow spree turn. Um, the reason I run this, and the reason I like to run this, is mainly because I like the game, but it's a very good beginner run to do. Because it's not nearly as fast as a Yume Nikki run. Um, but it still is, it has its own challenges and stuff, and. All in all, um, I really enjoy the run. I wish more people would run this, that's why I'm making the tutorial, but yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, I'll see you guys later.